We continue on with our boys basketball discussion, plus our first girls basketball conversation next on Varsity Voice presented by SFBN. Welcome to another edition of Varsity Voice presented by SFBN. I'm your host, Ari Bluestein, joined as always by Mike Samsel. And Mike, you're not only co-hosting the show this week, but you've got a good call on our SFBN Game of the Week on Friday night. A big interact game, Germantown Academy at Malvern Prep. Should be a good one. I'm excited for this game. As I look at this Malvern Prep team, they're 6-7 and seven on the season, but they're not your typical 6-7 and seven basketball team. They've had a really tough non-conference schedule, but they're very young. And this team's going to get better as they go along. Boy, do they have an outstanding score in this freshman, Deuce Turner. Who wears number four? Come on, Deuce. you got to wear number two. Make it all coordinate. <laughs> but uh, he had 38 points against St. Joe's. This young man's only going to get better as his career goes along. They lost to Episcopal 82-81 in overtime. That's their lone league loss. On the other side, for Germantown Academy, they've won two straight since they opened up their season with a loss to Haverford down at Philadelphia University. I'm excited to see Evan Eric Longino out on the perimeter as well. That should be a fun matchup. Even though they might not guard each other, him and Deuce Turner playing on the perimeter is going to make for a fun Friday night, for me anyway. Yeah, definitely, and I'll be tuning in as well. But Malvern Prep, they've got the young team, GA, the senior-laden team. So it'll be an interesting matchup between the veterans and the youngsters. And again, that'll be on Friday night, 7 o'clock, on the Sports Fan Base Network. Now, a battle of Downingtown. This is always a lot of fun, no matter what sport it is. Right. Downingtown East, Downingtown West. East might be the better team, but West, they're at home. West is at home, but they're getting an angry East team. They lost two times last week. They lost to Coatesville and then Perk Valley. This is going to be an angry team heading into a rivalry game. I don't think they're going to want to lose three straight. They've got a good guard in Malik Slay, averaging about 14 and a half per game. Downingtown uh, West is the traditional power, I guess you will, uh, in that league, in the Chessmont League. But I really like Downingtown East in this matchup. I just think an angry, talented team is a bad combination. Yeah, and you have to remember, Downingtown West lost three seniors. Ryan Betley's mm -hmm. playing at Penn. Dom Guerrero's at Westchester. So they're kind of in rebuild mode, a new coach as well. Downingtown East, like you said, lost to Coatesville, lost to PV, but they're two very good teams. And I think Downingtown East, still the better team, but certainly throw the record out the window. That game is tonight at 7 o'clock in Downingtown. A game tomorrow night, another good rivalry game in the Central League. Pencrest at Conestoga, and Pencrest is just playing phenomenal right now, but again, Conestoga, they've got the home court advantage. Yeah, Conestoga does have the home court advantage in this one, but Pencrest has the numbers on their side. Started off 0-2, they've ripped off 12 straight, obviously 8-0 in the league. Uh, their young, diminutive guard, Tyler Norwood, is just outstanding. He's small, only he listed at 5'9". Eh, he's listed at 5'9", uh, but he is electric when he's out on the floor. Yeah, he certainly is. And Conestoga, you know, they lost to Haverford High 54-51. That's a tough loss in league play. So certainly Pencrest looks like the favorite right now. But again, it's a rivalry game. Conestoga, Friday night, and the place should be hopping. And Conestoga's got some decent size, too. They have a, a post player, 6'4", forward in Charlie Martin. He's attracting some D2, D3 interest. You know, not huge as far as college players go. But when you have a 6'4", post player in high school, that could really give uh, some problems. To this Pencrest team. I think Nor was going to give some problems to Conestoga. Yeah. He's a heck of a player. And again, that is tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Pencrest at Conestoga in the Central League. In the Philadelphia Catholic League, a matchup between two teams there, maybe middle tier, but it's the Northeast Philly rivalry. Archbishop Ryan at Father Judge. I'm really excited for this game because I think this game is going to show us who's number one in tier two. Uh, although Judge has a win over Archbishop Wood, so they might say, hey, we might be in tier one. Right. And you know what? If they could get a definitive win over Ryan, they might be. 
because they took Roman Catholic down to the buzzer. They beat Wood. They have the first 1,000 point scorer in program history in Mark Rodriguez. If Judge can come out and make a statement in this game and win it by 15, win it by 20, they might belong in Tier 1 of the Philadelphia Catholic League. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And head coach Sean Tate has done a great job with that program. And, and I think Judge is the favorite in this game. But again, it's a rivalry game. And Ryan's got Isaiah Brockington, the NJIT commit. And they had a great start to the year. I know they, they lost by 30 to Archbishop Wood. Tough loss. First loss in the league for them. But definitely a good rivalry game. Again, that's tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Archbishop Ryan at Father Judge. Our first South Jersey matchup of the year, and it's a good one. Shawnee at Camden Catholic, and I know we covered the game in football right. on SFBN, but this should be a really nice battle between two of the top teams in South Jersey. Now think about this. Shawnee is undefeated. They're 10-0. They're number two in South Jersey. They don't have a single starter that's a senior. This is a young team that's only going to get better. They could be a power for the next couple of years. Uh, led by Dylan Devaney, who's actually a heck of a pitcher, uh, but he's turning out to be a pretty good forward for this team as well. You look at the other side for Camden Catholic. They come in riding hot. 58-47, a win over Camden. They're 8-1. and one. They just beat their rivals. This is on their home floor. This is a flat-out pick -em. It really is. And, and Camden's got, Camden Catholic's got a couple of really good players, too. Nazir Strader, who, who doubles as a football player, pretty good guard as well. And then Baba Ajike, a sophomore, 6'6 six six forward. Certainly room for growth there. And that matchup between Devaney of Shawnee and Ajike of Camden Catholic really could be the, the key to who wins this game. Yeah, that probably is going to be the deciding factor because if you take Devaney out of the game, I'm curious to see what plan B is for Shawnee. Yeah, I guess we will see again. That is tonight at 7 p.m. in South Jersey at Camden Catholic. We're going to continue on with more basketball talk next. You're watching Varsity Voice presented by SFBN. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Flip It Shakes has everything from burgers to sandwiches to delicious milkshakes. The sports fan base network crew chows down on a variety of favorites, from classic egg creams to the trending mac and cheese burger. Located at 233 2nd Street Pike in Southampton, you can dine in or take out. Flip It Shakes, great food, great service, a flippin' good time. You. Who, me? Yes, you. Do you like pro sports? Yeah. Do you like college sports? Of course. Do you like high school sports? I guess. Maybe you just don't know much about them. Hey, voice in the sky. Huh? Where can I go to learn more about Philadelphia area high school athletics? Just watch Varsity Voice every Thursday on TCN and CSN. segment is brought to you by Valley Financial Group, certified financial planners that organize your financial life and design plans for leaving your legacy. Valley Financial Group, helping you live the life you earn.
Last year, Cardinal O'Hara fell to Archbishop Wood in the PCL semifinals. Are you ready to make a run back to the championship again this year? Yeah, we're, we're very excited. We were disappointed with the way the Catholic League playoffs ended and then the state uh, playoffs ended. So this year we had everyone back in our team and working out to get some revenge and have get some vengeance. And last year, although you fell to Archbishop Wood in the semifinals, you were still able to make a state championship run and you lost against Cumberland Valley. Are you looking to get back to Hershey as well or do you just want to take care of PCL first? Um, we're looking just to take it game by game, one game at a time, but our biggest goal right now is the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship. That's where we really want to get, but we're still we're still hoping that we'll make it back to Hershey. We're definitely, that's another goal of ours this season. And talk about the team this year. You know, are there any other players that really contribute to the success so far? Um, yeah, we're definitely a special kind of team. We, uh, girls 1 to 14, all contribute. We go hard in practice and everybody um, bring something to the table, um, but specifically we have three juniors who start, um, Mara Hendrickson, Mackenzie Gardler, and Molly Paolino, and they all play a really significant role um, and have big games a lot. And then coming off the big boy, Kristen Denancourt and Lauren Light, who give us solid minutes, and other girls come every now and then as well, but we really share the ball well yeah. and we play a team game, which um, helps, us, helps us beat a lot of teams because we have five options on the floor and five girls who play hard um, man defense together. So it works out well. And you have your vengeance game against Wood this Friday. What are you expecting to see out of that? Um, we're just hoping to go out, play as hard as we can, and honestly, we're just going to take it by how the, game, how the game goes, play by play. Well, we're just hoping to get a win out of it, but we'll see. We're all just going to give it the best we can. And at the point that you're in this season, would you say that's your most anticipated game so far? Um, we had a big game um, this past week versus Newman Gretti, um, and we didn't definitely didn't do our best, so I think that motivates us even more um, for this Wood game. They're, that was highly anticipated, but um, the Wood game is also highly anticipated as well. We lost to both teams last year, so both of them are kind of revenge games. And most recently, Mary, you were the 12th Cardinal O'Hara girls basketball player to join the 1,000 Point Club. What was that moment like for you? It was really exciting. Um, it was a huge honor. There were some outstanding players on the list, so I was just really excited and honored to be a member of it. Um, and it was nice because I had, I got celebrated with my teammates and my coaches and a lot of family and friends were able to be there as well. So it was just all around a great moment. And what was the exact play when you made your 1,000 point? Um, we were pushing the ball up the floor in transition and uh, the junior Mara Hendrickson uh, threw the ball in the corner and I stepped into the shot and it didn't look like it was in at first, um, but it rolled in a little magic or something and everybody rushed the court um, and just celebrated the shot. Now, how far were you in advance, like preparing for your thousand point moment? Did you know it was coming? Were you just trying not to worry about it? Um, coming into the season, I didn't know how far I was away. Um, probably around like 40 or 30 away, um, Mr. McGinney kind of made me aware of it because uh, we had like three games coming up in a row that week. So I just played it, just played how I always did. I could tell my teammates now and then were giving me a few extra looks, maybe, but um, nobody talked about it, you know, and that was probably for the best because. Um, I didn't really want to think about it too much. I just kind of wanted it to happen, happen naturally like the other 99, 999 came. Now jumping ahead to next year, you both are graduating this year and will be playing basketball in college. Mary, you're going to St. Joe's and Hannah, you're going to Drexel. Hannah, what was that recruiting process like for you and you know what made you really want to become a Drexel Dragon? Um, it, the recruiting process went pretty well for me. I mean, I knew I wanted to go to Drexel. It was close to my house and I just love the city, the whole atmosphere of it. I love the conference, the coaches. I just thought it was a perfect fit for me. And Mary, how about you with St. Joe's? Um, I definitely looked at other schools, but at the end of the day, I've always been a St. Joe's fan. Both my parents went there. My dad was the Hawk mascot for the men's team. So I think my first game for them was at six months old, and I've had season tickets ever since. So I wanted to make sure, um, and it was the perfect fit. And um, when I saw all the other schools, I knew it was. I've known the coaches since I was four, um, and they're great people, and they have a great culture and atmosphere down there, so I kind of knew the whole time. And for the, the pair of you, you know, you've been playing, you said, since you were in, what, about fourth grade, and next year will be the first year you're on opposite sides yeah. of, the, of the bench, <laughs> yeah. and you'll probably play each other. What do you think that'll be like? It's going to be weird. It's going to be really weird. Definitely different, but we'll see. 
Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be weird playing against her. I guess it's probably good we're not the same position, so we have to guard each other. But it'll be it'll be weird seeing her in a different jersey than I'm yeah. in. Yeah, but um, be weird. yeah, it'll take a while to get used mm -hmm. to. But it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, Mary, Hannah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks thank so you for much. having us. Serving the community since 1974, Northeast Racquet Club and Fitness Center is perfect for the whole family. We provide a complete schedule of children's activities for ages 2 and a half through 12 and a full-service fitness center for teens, adults, and seniors. Our sports arena features year-round roller hockey and seasonal indoor soccer leagues. Tennis, racquetball, aquatics, basketball, dance, karate, group exercise classes are all available to groups of all ages. Stop by and bring the whole family to the Northeast Racquet Club and Fitness Center at the corner of Cruistown Road in Grand Avenue. Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you are a small to medium sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. Get pain-free physical therapy. At PTW, we know that sometimes physical therapy can be tough and painful, so we do whatever we can to get you feeling pain-free again. Each one of our centers is equipped with an Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill or warm water therapy pool to unload your aching joints. From pre- and post-surgery rehab, fitness programs, and work injury rehab, PTW is your go-to therapy provider. Call or visit us online to schedule your PTW visit today. This segment is brought to you by Sluggersville, Philadelphia's first premier year-round indoor baseball and softball training facility. With over 40,000 square feet of turf and 22 cages, Sluggersville is the largest of its kind in the area. Call 215-673-1258 to schedule your rental or training session. Welcome back to Varsity Voice. To start our girls basketball discussion, we bring in Jen Wilgus from Game On. Jen, thanks for coming on the show. It's great to be here, Ari. Well, the first game I really wanted to talk to you about is the Philadelphia Catholic League, the showdown. Cardinal O'Hara versus Archbishop Wood at Arcadia on Friday night. It should be a great game. The first of many great games for both these teams going forward. I mean, it was kind of an afterthought that it got added to the bill with the Wood Boys and LaSalle Boys at Arcadia, but it's you know, it has that big arena, bigger arena feel to it because you know we're going to see these teams down the road playing in the Palestra as we usually do. These teams both played for state championships last year at different classifications. Wood obviously won, and Cardinal O'Hara lost to Cumberland Valley, yeah. which is a multiple time defending state champion. Mm -hmm. So, no shame there. Wood is, you know, missing that sort of eye catching talent, you know, I, not talent, I shouldn't say, those marquee names. You know, Bailey Greenberg obviously went on to Drexel, and Kate Connolly transferred to Souderton. But, you know, Wood's a basketball factory, and they, they've got these kids who have been in the program for a long time. Uh, Katie May, uh, Shannon May, uh, Cassie Siebold, Carly Brown, uh, you know, they, and they move the ball so well, and they play so well together. And then, obviously, O'Hara's got Mary Sheehan and Hannah Nihill, who are, who are those marquee names. It, it's going to be great. With the reclassification, are you surprised to see them both in 5A? Well, you know what's interesting is that O'Hara has the enrollment for a 5A school in girls basketball, very similar to Wood, Ryan, and Carroll, all of whom are 5A. But O'Hara chose to play up to 6A and in fact have the lowest enrollment of any 6A school in girls basketball. So these two teams can both win state championships even though they'll likely face off in the PCL playoffs. Should be a great matchup, kind of a preview potentially Absolutely. of games to come on Friday night. There's another really good game on Friday night in Suburban 1, battle in the Continental Division, CB South and CB West. Doesn't get much better than that. It absolutely doesn't. It didn't. It doesn't get much better than the first meeting between those two teams, which was before the holidays. I was a little rusty. I was at the game, and <clears throat> it was won on a last-second half-court shot by CB South's Alexa Brody. And I didn't get the ball leaving the shooter's oh, hand. No. I only got it going through the hoop and the celebration. So I kind of had to write very creatively around that in my video. But um, yeah, these two teams are. You know, the, the Continental itself is such a tough league, and these teams just really um, are, are coming on at, at the right time. And CB West is young, 
But again, another basketball factory in the way that Terry Rakowski runs that program. He subs in and out. So it's just this constant flow. He's coming at you and coming at you. And CB South, you know, has kind of hit the skids a little bit recently. They lost to CB East and they lost to Saturday. And so they really need this one for confidence. Well, let's move to the national and look at New Chamonix and Abington. This should be a good game as well. It should. Now, it kind of depends on which Abington team shows up. Now, Neshamini won the first meeting. Abington's lost two games in the league. Um, and coming in, you know, they always have high expectations. Dan Marsh does a great job over there. But there's something about, you know, I feel like Abington's obviously got the talent, Elizabeth O'Leary, Cassandra Brown down low. She's a, one of those rare players who's a little bit bigger, and she should inspire fear in the other team. But I, I don't really feel like Abington has reached its potential. Now, Neshamini, on the other hand, um, They've, they've been good for several years. You know, they made it far in the state tournament last year, and they are going to be good for many years. They've got Kristen Curley, who's a freshman at point guard. Um, Allison Harvey and Brooke Mullen are young, and um, Devin Storms, who's, who's a good leader. So, you know, it should be a good game. Abington can definitely win, but I would say Nishami's the favorite going in. Yeah, and uh, you know, speaking of the Suburban One National, uh, Neshaminy and Abington aren't even the two best teams right now in that division. That's Council right. Rock North is six and zero, um, and they actually play a kind of a non-league game on Saturday against Suburban One Continental member North Penn. Interesting game between two very good teams. Absolutely, and between two very good coaches. Um, North Penn's Maggie DeMartelier is a Hall of Fame. Uh, inductee in, in Montgomery County. And Lou Palkin, it's, it's funny, um, the North coach, when I was at a North Penn game, early, like really early in the season, he was up there in the stands with his little iPad, you know, taking video. I mean, he is a pro and he scouts teams and he'll have his team ready. Um, I love to see matchups like this between, the, between good programs from different leagues. Um, and it, it's anyone's game. It really is. I think it's going to be interesting. And it, 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 if you look at these games, Suburban One Continental, Suburban One National, and then national against continental. We should be able to make a lot more sense of things after this weekend. Yeah, I think we will. Good point. Yeah, definitely. So Jen, thanks so much for joining us for shining some light on the girls basketball world. My pleasure. Check out what's coming up on the Sports Fan Base Network. Well, it's time to make our picks and Mike uh, I got the uh, better of you last week and now overall we're tied so you ready to go here for the final eight episodes or so I am but I would just like to remind you I'm seven and one during basketball season and yes well I'm gonna try and make up some ground here in the winter so let's get started we're gonna start with girls basketball here Cardinal O'Hara against Archbishop Wood tomorrow night really good Catholic League matchup it's going to be a very good Catholic League matchup and I'm gonna go with Archbishop Wood in this game I think the sum of the Archbishop of wood parts are a little bit stronger even though the top end talent might not be as good. Yeah and I'm thinking I'm gonna go with the opposite here. I'm gonna go with Mary Sheen and Hannah Nihill leading the way for O'Hara. O'Hara looking to get some revenge on Archbishop Wood for the PCL semifinal loss last year. So I'm gonna go with Cardinal O'Hara. Okay let's go to the Chessmont here. Downingtown East at Downingtown West. I'm gonna go with Downingtown East in this game and I think Downingtown East is gonna win pretty handily. West is in a rebuilding year. It's a rivalry game. It's on their home floor. So sometimes you could throw the records out, but coming off of two straight losses, I think Downingtown East is going to come out and want to make a statement. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to go with Downingtown East. Uh, you know, they're a very good team coming off a couple of losses. Downingtown West, I think they're going to keep it close, but um, I, th I think Downingtown East will win the game ultimately. Central League game, Pencrest at Conestoga. Who you got? I'm going to go with Pencrest in this game. They come into this game after an 0-2 start, having won 12 straight, and their guard, Tyler Norwood, is a lot of fun to watch. He's little. He's not as big. You know, he's only 5'8", 5'9", but he's a heck of a player. He really is, and that's why I like Pencrest in this game, too. I mean, they are undefeated in the league play. They're really playing well right now. Tough game for Conestoga. Again, they lost to Haverford High a little bit earlier last week, so I'm going to go with Pencrest in this one. Philadelphia Catholic League, Northeast Philly rivalry, Archbishop Ryan at Father Judge. Father Judge is a really good basketball team. As I said earlier, I think with a definitive win here and a decisive win, 
they could creep into that top tier of the Philadelphia Catholic League. I think they know that, and I think they're going to use that as motivation to come out and get a win. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you again here. I have to take Father Judge. I mean, that Archbishop Wood win really impressed me, and they lost at the buzzer to Roman Catholic. I think they've played better so far this year. Ryan will put up a fight, but I like Judge. All right, finally, South Jersey, Shawnee at Camden Catholic. I really like Shawnee in this game. 10 and 0 on the season. They've got a lot of really good players that are young. I know Camden Catholic is flying high off of their win against Camden, but I'm going to lean Shawnee in this one. Well, I'm going to pick Camden Catholic in this one. I think I just wanted to say Baba Ajike one more time because I love this guy. I love the way he plays, and I think the Irish, they're at home. They're on a roll, and I think they're going to build off of that Camden win. Will be a great game in South Jersey, but I'm going with Camden Catholic. So I guess we'll see what happens here, Mike. We're probably going to be tied again after this week, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, Mike, thanks so much for joining me as always. Always a pleasure. Check out our highlight of the week. The highlight of the week is brought to you by the Physical Therapy and Wellness Institute. Go to www.ptwinstitute.com to find a location near you. Kobe Thomas. Oh, and Green stole it away. Bad pass. Quick hands from Quade. Whoa, on spin cycle. Oh, and Quade puts it down. Oh, green from way out. He is unbelievable. Video equipment for Varsity Voice has been provided by DMP Video. DMP Video, you provide the moment, we'll capture the memories. For more information about our videography services, please go to our website at www.dmpvid.com. The Sports Fan Base Network. This area's leader in high school sports broadcasting is continually bringing you the most in-depth coverage. Join us for Varsity Voice every Thursday on TCN and CSN, where we'll have interviews with players, coaches, writers, and more, plus analysis, highlights, and a variety of features on major topics in the Delaware Valley high school sports community. Tune in every Thursday at 6 p.m. on TCN and 11.30 on CSN for the best and only high school sports show around, Varsity Voice, presented by SFBN.